the Game of Life podcast coming at you, where we bring to you the behind the scenes lives of NBA players, business savvy entrepreneurs, and top level performers in all fields of personal development. The podcast that helps you become the best version of you. The Game of Life, David Nurse. Here we go. But David Stern talking about the night uh, of the of the of the brawl and watching it he, he tells the story it's amazing he's he says i was getting ready for bed and i had gone downstairs and just fixed myself a peanut butter and jelly on an english muffin and a nice <laughs> glass of milk and then i looked up on screen and all hell was breaking loose <laughs> Game of Lifers, welcome back to another episode of the Game of Life podcast. I'll be your host today, like always, David Nurse, and we are on part two with Ray Bartholomew, going in-depth behind the scenes on Never Heard Before stories coming from basketball, a love story, something that is just very transcendent in life in general, from NBA players at the highest level, who a lot of us look at as just objects and figures and and role models, being real people, being real, the real feelings, the real behind the scenes of what goes into this, what goes into their identity, their daily struggles. You're going to learn a lot more here today, and you're going to also learn on some really cool stories of some of the biggest events that ever happened in the NBA, like the melee at the Palace with between the Pacers and the Pistons, what really set that off? You're going to learn about the basketball passion of the Philippines. If you've ever thought you've seen passion about any sport, wait until you hear about the Philippines. And there's just a lot of packed stories, and stories with a purpose. Not just stories that just tell stories, just tell stories, but stories that really pack importance and life lessons that we all can learn, that we all can apply. And that's on this episode, part two, Game of Life with Rafe. Bartholomew. Without further ado, you know what we do. We buckle up and we get after it. Here we go. And and it's it's just it was it's so cool in the book and in the film to see you know to see that all these people who I've looked up to for years or or the you know these people who are larger than life to me really feel the same way you know and, and yeah. so it's almost unspoken you know it's just there. Yeah, that's that. T- tell the audience of some of the people that are in this in this book that had gave interviews. People that have like I remember you telling me that never really given an interview ever. And it's just like it's super exclusive to be able to get to. Who are some of those names that'll stand out to people? Sure. Well, and it's not. It's it, it like I think a lot of these folks have given interviews, but at this length, at this right. level of depth, you just don't see very often. Like we they, we got five hours with Bill Russell. Five hours with Oscar Robertson going through, you know, their their upbringing, their 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 college years, Man. Olympics, their careers, the you know, or inside and outside the game. Uh, the so that kind of, being able to collect all of that in one place is is really a, a, a an amazing achievement for the you know for Dan the director to have just wrangled that many that many of these great great figures yeah. under one umbrella you know that that alone is an accomplishment and then it was just, just this privilege to go through it all and, and assemble it into into the book uh there so i mean you've got um and, and and the other great thing about it was we got some of the last long interviews with a lot of guys who you know sadly have, have passed away right. um uh when jack ramsey it was one of his last interviews moses malone is in the book wow. um uh, Mel Daniels, the former Indiana Pacers center during, you know, one of the a- a greats of the ABA years. Uh, and, and, um, Michael Goldberg, who was the national basketball coaches association, uh, head for a long time. And, and, and also an important figure in the ABA, you know, these, they sort of was one last chance to, to grab a bunch of, you know, to, to get the, the, the stored wisdom and, and thank, and thank God it's there. That's amazing, man. That is purely, that is just beyond transcendent right there in itself let's play a little game here let's have a little fun let's go you tell an nba story i'll tell an nba story we go back and forth it can be rapid fire nba stories but let's give the audience something just if they're not which they should be absolutely juiced up right now to read this book because there's so many amazing stories in this book let's but let's go back and forth and rapid fire some some interesting nba stories that people don't know okay uh one that i loved was 
learning about uh, the this the the not secret but forgotten beef between George Gervin and Michael Jordan. Nice. Uh, I had no I, I had I, I had no clue that this had occurred. But uh, late in Gervin's career, he got traded to the Bulls, uh, and it was maybe you know like really like the last year or two of his career, and. It was the year that Michael Jordan spent most of the time out with his with a broken foot. So it was the second or third year in the league. Um, and <clears throat> Jordan was unhappy when it happened because they had also traded uh, Jordan's best friend or, or had to or actually, I think, had to waive him at the time to make room. It was who was Rod, Rod Higgins, one of his guys on the team. And then uh, also there was this rumor that that Gervin had participated in a plan to freeze Jordan out of the all-star game, you know, where with, with, uh, along with Isaiah Thomas and, and a couple of the other guys at the time, you know, start, sort of more established stars. And Gervin was like, Gervin was like, so I got out there and they're asking me what, what's my problem with Michael? I was like, I don't got a problem with him. He's being a punk, you know? And he's like, <laughs> look, I wear his shoes to this day, but he was, he was a punk back then, you know? So it just, this, and it just, you know, I, you know, Jordan is such a exalted figure that you don't get to know even people who probably do have yeah. some issues with him over the course of their careers, you know, as competitors or whatever, they ne- you just not, you don't say, you don't speak ill of him even in the past. And so yes. Gervin being the one guy who just doesn't, care you know and it was not it's not rude it was not uh improper in any way but just that he it's just a guy who's willing to just go out there and say look i didn't like him at the time because he's being a jerk to me (laughs) that's hilarious staying on that note okay jordan did he get kicked out of the nba for gambling or did he really go to leave baseball Oh man, I, I have no clue. Uh, do you have a do you have a do you have a real do you I have, have a theory on it? I have some pretty solid insights from people that I really trust that sources that will remain unsaid that he did was told to step away for the year because of his gambling addiction. I I don't have anything to prove it, but I've people that I trust highly, that's what that's the story from them. Man, do you so if that were if that were true is do you, in retrospect would that have been a good idea for the NBA? I mean like that's like I'm trying to think what in the what in the world could LeBron James do that could cause the NBA to say Hey, you know, we need you to step away for a while. I mean, like that yeah. is giving away. That is to, to to say that, like, to tell your biggest star, your Crazy. your, you know, the, the one of the greatest players of all time, you know, one of the you know, whether one of the top two for sure, and, and just be like, sorry, we we need you to step aside right now. I mean, that, that, yeah, yeah it's, it'd have to be some an existential threat to the league. Yeah, um, exa- exactly, and I feel like nowadays there's no way that anything could be kept just like tight lock just because of social media and how accessible everybody is and like every little thing instagram story or this and this and that gets out there but back in the day i mean it was just newspapers or hearsay and so jordan could do whatever he wanted which is just helps him so much more because you never really heard about him going out till 5 a.m gambling but everybody knew he was doing it and many other stories like that like he was built up you're you're right like i probably the greatest player of all time i think lebron when it said is done said and done will be better but He's just put on such a such a pedestal and almost like a a god to transcending the game that you can't you can't say anything bad about him. Yeah. Well, so what was this? To do, what what's the story from you? Okay. All right. We're going uh, Allen Iverson. Okay. All right. I'll keep the source uh, unnamed, but okay. So Iverson. Okay. You've you've seen like the broke and and those ESPN thirty for thirties. He uh, he had a tendency to throw his money around a little bit, so he. Didn't fly. Didn't go to the team plane at the same time as the team did when they were flying out. He drove his car to the airport and left it in the overnight parking, like the expensive overnight parking. So a month, two, it, it go by. Two months, actually, two months is what what the story was told to me. Two months goes by, and the team, the Sixers at the time, the, get the call from the airport saying that uh, asking if Mr. Iverson was going to come come pick up his car and. They asked Allen, and like literally, he had no idea that he owned that car. So he had oh, forgot man. that he owned the car that he left at the airport. That's how bad it got for him. Wow! Yeah. Wow! I know that's nuts. Um, I, I one man. This is the, the the story of 
This I, I this is something I, I can't believe we ended up not being able to include in the book. Ooh. It was this this weird, uh, almost I don't know coincidence or, or sequence of events where basically. So there are some amazing interviews in in there of that touching on um, the. the 2004, the Malice at the Palace, the our test brawl between the, the Pacers and the Pistons, and uh, you know, and the some of some details that I had never heard before about how the league responded to it. Um, you know, our test talking about our meta, you know, meta talking about it uh, in in retrospect, all this really amazing stuff. And so with the book, we we had already seen Jackie and I had already seen a cut of a 15 minute part of the film that was going to be focusing on this. So we thought, you know what, this is already going to be a huge part of the film. It is, there was all, you know, back in, uh, you know, years ago at Grantland, we did a huge oral history already of it with a lot of the basic information in it. So we wouldn't, we would really only be uncovering two or three new stories to add to that history. So because of that, we were like, you know what, we want to squeeze so much into this book. Let's leave that out uh, and, in, and instead focus on other stuff because it's going to be in the film anyway. I guess something happened along the way where, and this is not surprising, that I guess the league decided after you know later on that, you know what, they didn't want to make that footage available wow. because they didn't want it in a film. And so – and it was already after we had – set our our book and there was no way to go back in and add this whole new section so it just kind of got lost from both but there but david stern talking about the night uh, of the of the of the brawl and watching it he, he tells the story it's amazing he's he says i was getting ready for bed and i had gone downstairs and just fixed myself a peanut butter and jelly on an English muffin and a nice glass of milk. And then I looked up on screen and all hell was breaking loose. All right. Welcome back to the Game of Life podcast. We've got Jeremy Lin on. Jeremy, what's going on? The two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. He's like the eye of the hurricane because in the middle of the hurricane, it's really calm. And so Michael never tried to stop all the madness around him. What he learned was he just got calm in the middle of it. Stealing that pass at Staples, I was like, dude. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Give Kobe a little glance after that. What's up? Uh, you want to be that person that when they walk into a room that people are happy to see you. Talk to me about working with Ronaldo. You helped coach Ronaldo to become a great sleeper. A human test tube. Thank you, man. I, I, I think that's like one notch up from being a human guinea pig. They'll take it. In a good uh, way. And I just pray, man. Like, I just pray and I just thank God for, for everything. The moment you realized, man, I'm in the NBA. Oh, man, that was from day one. That was the, the, the day I got drafted when I heard my name being called. Buckle up. The Game of Life podcast coming at you, where we bring to you the behind-the-scenes lives of NBA players, business-savvy entrepreneurs, and top-level performers in all fields of personal development. The podcast that helps you become the best version of you. <laughs> and it was, and it was, and I mean, just the, and the way he, he, de he delivers it also in the, you know, in the video, in like that classic little bit sarcastic deadpan stern voice yeah. where he's talking about you know I, I was minding my own business eating the peanut butter and jelly <laughs> and then the whole league blows up right in front of me uh it was the funny it's the funniest line and and some of the other stuff from from that part those parts of the book were uh, or of the interviews um which is <laughs> it, it, you know meta yeah. is still the way he talks about it is still kind of mind blowing because there, you know, he goes back and forth between kind of owning it and, and, and accepting responsibility for the, you know, his role in it. And then also, but he'll, he can never quite hold back from chirping in with a little, you know, 
But, you know, none of it would have happened if Ben Wallace hadn't overreacted to a soft foul. Uh, <laughs> so it's like it's, it's always going back and forth with him. It's, you know, it's sort of the I mean, you can it's not hard to imagine, you know, uh, any if any person, any basketball player has more obviously had, you know, the the, the angel and the, the bad influence over each ear, you know, whispering on both sides. You know, you could all with 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 our test, you could almost always you will almost see them whispering into his ear at all times. Yeah, man, they should make a movie about that. That is, that's such an interesting time in the NBA that changed so much that people just, they kind of just put it on the back burner. Well, that's, I, I think the, the, the league in that case is pretty serious about not letting much of, uh, certainly footage of that come out again, just because I think in this case, even though it, it was, very important to how you know the NBA changed the way it, tr- it it treats the fan experience and and obviously implemented rules to make sure that or do everything yeah. they could that, that that would never happen again. It is for this sure. this watershed moment for yeah. the league, but it's one that they don't really want a whole lot of. They don't want to reopen that discussion because it's it's just they just want it to be settled history. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. All right, I got two stories for you. Two two personal stories. And they're also in – one of them's in my book. And my book's more of using the NBA stories of players that I've worked with, more for like mindset type, uh, my, making mindset shifts and being comfortable in who you are and finding your passion and joy and motivation. But one of them was really interesting. And one of my favorite guys is Brooke Lopez. So Brooke Lopez, a <laughs> little bit – a little bit different, like in a good way. Like basketball does not define him. The guy loves Disney World, built his mansion on Disney property. We went to Epcot together after an Orlando game. But one really cool one that stood out that I, when I was with the Nets, that I saw uh, from just before the game sitting across the locker room, it was Kobe's farewell tour, his last, his last season. We were out in L.A. playing the Lakers. And before every game, if, you, if it's the last game against the Lakers and Kobe, everybody's trying to get his autograph, his jersey, his shoes. So literally everybody in the Nets locker room is getting Kobe's autograph. They're getting their shoes signed. And, and then there's Brooke. Brooke is sitting in the corner talking to a Japanese, an old lady Japanese reporter. And Brooke is also very interested in Japan. He loves the anime. He loves the Japanese culture. So instead of like every other player getting Kobe's autograph and being super in-depth on Kobe and everything. Brooks having a 30-minute conversation with a Japanese reporter about anime Japanese. It was like, I just, I just saw it happen. I was like, Man, you know what? That's really cool. Brooke is not afraid about being who he is and not afraid about what others think of him, which was, I mean, you wouldn't think that in an NBA player that they'd rather talk to a Japanese reporter about anime than get Kobe's autograph, but... It's just a it's just a cool story. Yeah, that is really neat. I, I, you know, you mentioned him. I, I feel like we almost have to mention that uh, Brooke has an interesting connection to the Philippines in that his uh, the point guard on their high school basketball team up there in Fresno, which also had Quincy Pondexter on it, yeah. um, is a, a friend of mine. Shout out to Ryan Rapon, wow. uh, who who who. Um, you know, played for a season in the P- the PBA D League in Manila, and uh, and they still are tight. They go to, I mean, he's like they go to Disney all the time together. Every they they have summer trips together. They have this whole high school crew that still rolls really deep. And it's, it's always been cool, sort of one degree of separation, hearing about it from from Ryan because it's sort of I don't know, like yeah. it's you don't think about maybe maybe it's more common among NBA players than you know than 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 I know, but just the idea of guys who make it to that highest, highest level, you know, Brooks been in all-star games, uh, that, that still are basically gonna, at the end of the day, they want to go spend part of their summer back in Fresno, just hanging out, seeing friends, visit Disney as many times as they can and, and, and always still have this crew of of friends that have that have been tight for you know 15 years you know and and do things all to get all together every year it's it is really cool it's really cool to see the players that stay the same to who they are no matter what kind of fame or no matter what kind of notoriety they get they're just who they are and they're comfortable and in being who they are comfortable and confident and that's kind of a kind of a theme we've been using for this but i mean a super important theme for everybody to have in their own life like if 
if you're scared about being who you are, you're never going to live your life to a full joy. So why not just be you? Be fully transparent and be you. I mean, it'll be so much more fun on the journey in the process of going through an everyday grind of, of life. Quick break in our storytelling podcast with Ray Bartholomew to bring to you our sponsor for this week. Have you ever felt like you wanted to get better sleep? Mm, yeah, I'm guessing you did. And did you know that the average person may spend more than 26 years of their life sleeping? That's crazy. 26 years well spent, that is. And getting enough restorative sleep is a game changer. Trust me, myself, like I'm an absolute nut for sleep and I wake up every single morning with ultimate energy. And what great sleep does for you, it helps you stay healthier longer. You're not going to get sick. You perform at your best. You have the most mental clarity, energy, focus, more productive, avoid the hunger, hangry mistakes, manage your weight, everything based on sleep. And what the order ring is, it's a daily in-depth feedback to help you improve your life. Aura helps you better understand your body, your personal body, and your personal goals. You'll be guided through an intelligent, data-driven plan to help you improve across all important aspects of your well-being. It is unreal. Aura ring, I wear it all the time. I optimize my sleep, check my HRV, wake up in the mornings, checking my score, competing with myself, and now your chance to get $50 off, $50 off at checkout, the code DNURSE. Enter that AuraRing.com, 50% off at checkout, DNURSE. Get your sleep game on. All right, talking about sleep, story time, back to the second half of the podcast. Let's go. Okay, I got one more quick one for you, and then you hit me with one more, and then then we'll, we'll let you get rolling here and let us know on what's coming next. So my quick one is Dennis Rodman. Rodman is obviously a legend. And there's been some – I think there was an ESPN 30 for 30 that came out that kind of showed like his behind the scenes, of what he'd do before the game, and like his just, just craziness of partying. So my uncle, yeah. who's a coach for the Raptors now, Nick Nurse, he coached, uh, he coached over in Brighton, Brighton, England. And he brought Dennis over for a one game, signed him to a one-game contract. It's kind of like a promotion thing for Brighton. Uh-huh. England's not the biggest basketball place, obviously, so he wanted to get uh, the basketball culture pump in there. So he, he brings Dennis over, and it was, like, it was great. He got, I mean, tons of fans. Everything went, went well with that. But he was, he was just telling me the story of, like, he picks him up. They go out. And, like, and he's not like – Michael's not like that, but he, he was trying to be with Dennis and make him feel comfortable and everything. And he, uh, they're going out to the clubs to like 5 a.m. And Dennis brings a party back to his hotel and is not asleep till like 8, 9 a.m. Goes out that night, gets 20 points, 20 rebounds, and wins a game. Like that's just him as a machine. Like that's just who he was and what he would just be able to do all the time. But also in that same, in that same breath, just being a super caring, super genuine, like caring for others like more than you'd ever think Dennis Rodman of uh, the perception would be. Yeah, there are. I've I've heard stories over the years like that where you know obviously he's got this sort of wild side and he would and was legendary for for you know Shaq tells a story in the book also about you know that that brief period when when Rodman was in and out of the Lakers and Shaq was there and he's like yeah this guy would walk in like middle of the middle of the coaches uh in the middle of the coaches uh like like you know pre-game instructions not paying any attention jumping and taking a take a cold shower get out on the court for five minutes of warm-ups and then bam he's grabbing 30 <laughs> rebounds like he, he just you know so that stuff but also that you know he had this really huge generosity of spirit yeah. that that almost was you know, uh, you couldn't. It, that didn't fit with the image of the partying and sort of the, some of the some of the the demons that come with that 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 people associated with Rodman and some of the stuff he did on the court. But that, that you know, but when you got him, that he could connect with people one on one almost anywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's see, it's just piece, stuff that people aren't able to see, and they just see these uh, athletes as figures, but not actually real people. And Rodman was a real, genuine, caring person. All right, before the last question here, where can everybody find more about the book? Where can everybody follow more about you? Like, I, I think the book is just it's so fun on reading it on a story level, but just also just so motivational and people being able to see that you can be 100% comfortable in who you are. 
the, yeah, I, the, so the book uh, Basketball Love Story has been out since September. Yep. Um, it's you, anywhere that books are sold, you can find it. It'll be at you know the brick, brick and mortar bookstores, whether it's an indie store in where, wherever you live or a big Barnes and Noble. Uh, Amazon, of course, has it, and um, it, it should it should be a, a widely available for a pretty long period of time. And and coming up later in 2019, we'll have a uh, paperback come out, so it'll be a little cheaper, easier to carry around for people who prefer it that way. The audio book, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed listening to it. So if you want to just pot, you know, download it and listen to it that way, it's it they did it. The publisher did a wonderful job with it. They hired seemed like I didn't count, but it, I think maybe a dozen different voice actors That's to awesome. play the different people. So it it's not you wonder how you're going to do an oral history audio book. Are people are you just going to have one person changing his or her voice throughout the whole thing? That's going to be terrible. Um they did they they didn't do it that way. It really comes out well, and it's fun to listen to in that form too. So if you you know if you prefer it that way, you can do that. Uh, and of course, the film Basketball Love Story is available on on ESPN their website. You can stream it. So any you know, please check all of that out. Um, personally, you know my my Twitter is there uh, Ra- at Rafe Boogs uh, B O O G S and. Um, uh, you know, other than that, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back to Manila and seeing friends yeah. and, and hooping a little bit. <laughs> nice, man. That's what I was going to ask you. What's coming next? I got, I got one idea for you before you tell me what's next on the docket and what the, the hoop in Manila, what you're writing next. So Kobe is now obviously a storyteller and he's a very mm-hmm. good storyteller. So my idea is that you and Kobe get together and tell his story. Tell his story from behind the scenes in the locker room of the Lakers. Like I'll have a whole book about locker room interactions with the Lakers. I've got some good friends. I've got three good friends that played with Kobe, or actually four, four good friends that played with Kobe at the Lakers. And I've heard some just super crazy stories. So I think that'd be a, an amazing project to work on. Work with Kobe, let him be the storyteller and you tell stories with him. But that's what I think. You tell us what's hey. coming next. Yeah, uh, you know Kobe Bean. If you uh, if you want, I'm right here. You know, come look, come 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 find me. Uh, no, I, I, I've I have uh, paid it. You know, obviously I've no I've watched as he started off the this media company and sort of where it's going, and it's the kind of thing where if uh, you know they end up doing more written content that needs editing and writing, uh, man, I, I it's the kind of place would be a, a really fun thing to go do. To one sort of get to to spend some time and to anyone who gets to spend some time around him. And sort of see what makes him tick instead of just, you know, kind of hearing it all secondhand would would be an amazing experience. And and she, the, the the amount of passion he's already bringing to it. And also you talk about someone who's willing to do some some kind of out of left field stuff. You know, he's yeah. all that yeah. puppet stuff. You know, it's not he's not just doing and not that there's anything wrong with the way, you know, if you compare it to, you know, LeBron and the, the, the uninterrupted, you know, that's that's great, too. But it's a much more sort of down the it's, it's a fast ball down the middle it's athletes talking about their lives and right. their journeys and their craft and that's something that we know was going to work where kobe it seems like he really wants to do some some wild stuff and and experiment and push some some borders so it's it would seems like it would be such a fun place to work uh because because he's just willing to, to try anything it seems i agree yeah i mean storytelling that's not being a like the killer mamba mentality that everybody thinks about him and i i respect him even more so for being able to do that but tell us what's coming next for you. Give us all a preview of what's next. So the the, the simplest answer, man, is that uh, I'm actually calming down a little bit, not running around or not at least – looking to run around as much as i have in the past although man if a good opportunity comes <laughs> yeah. i'm 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 ready to go you know i'm 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 always ready to run but um you know i actually uh, a few months ago actually you know right after we last saw each other when i was writing a story about you for the athletic um i, I um i took a job working of a, a year now now you're gonna get i i you're gonna get mad at me for burying the lead i took a job working at eater the food website oh uh, nice man we have <laughs> <laughs> talked about food come on uh as uh really doing features editing for their national website so That's i don't awesome. you know i am i am not a, a world-class foodie you know i've been exposed to a lot of different good food which I, i'm i'm happy that it's happened but i'm not like a i'm not gonna be on there 
trying to be a tastemaker, but <laughs> what I am doing is it's kind of, you know looking for great stories that are related to food and and writers who are excited to to, to write about it and and then helping them you know basically execute that on the page. So so far it's been fun. The people there are really nice. It's fun to sort of get into a little bit of a new world, you know, where where you know uh, I'm always going to be involved with basketball in various ways, and it's something that I, I'm not worried about losing touch with. So it's it's cool to work on you, you know you my professional skills on something a little bit different. Uh, so it's, it's been fun so far. So I'm, you know, holding down that job and, um, pl I am planning to, uh, to go back to the Philippines for at least a visit in the, you know, two or three weeks early, early next year to, uh, to promote the book a little bit because I haven't gotten back there since it's been out. And I've got, I've had friends texting me and, and hitting me on Viber and all the different messaging apps <laughs> and, and seeing tweets go up with po pictures of the book. And people are so pumped, you know, out there that, that not only is there this, you know, good new basketball book that for a basketball loving nation, but also that, you know, that, that sort of, even though obviously I'm, I'm not, a, a product of the Philippines in, you know, in, in the, in the most literal way, I, I, a lot of, I kind of grew up there. I spent, you know, the, my, the beginning of my adulthood there, I kind of learned to take care of myself there and I'm still very much a part of the basketball culture there. So people have been really supportive of it and I'm, I'm really excited to go back there and share it with people in Manila. That's really cool, man. That's awesome. And I got so much more respect, respect for you that you're in the food in the food writing industry now too, and just expanding everything that you do. And like, literally, I think the next podcast that we do is going to be just me, you, Kevin, some other foodies involved with basketball, some NBA players. And we can literally just talk about all the crazy food we've had in life. Cause I absolutely like literally that the, cool, the, the coolest thing about traveling over 45 countries is eating the food in every country. So if you ever want to do a piece on food and country and basketball together, I got you. I, I, I was going to say, I know exactly who to call. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool, man. I appreciate your time coming on here and just sharing stories and just like literally it's just a, a ton of fun just having a story time with you. But I mean, it's, it's even more than just that. It's just your passion for what you do, your passion for just genuinely giving and caring for, for others. And I mean, just watching your journey. Like you're not afraid to take on what's next. You're not afraid to change. You're not you're not afraid of what uh, the majority of people in life really let, let hold them back and not allowing themselves to be who they truly are. And you are a living testament of being fully confident in who you are, comfortable in your own skin, and it just, it just shows through through your energy and, and the light that you are, man. So I just really want to thank you for coming on this podcast and really want to thank you for just being who you are and just keep doing it. Wow, man. Well, well, thank you. I, I, I'll t I will say, you know, it, that you don't always feel confident in every moment, but yes. you, know, you try to stick to what, what feels right. And it hasn't hasn't led me too far astray yet. So I, it is it's one way to go through things, man. It's been fun so far for me. Thanks. For sure, man. Life's a journey. So why not enjoy it? You know? Yes, sir. Big time. Thank you to Ray Bartholomew for part two, part one and part two. It's been a joy. It's been a pleasure to have Rafe on. It's, it's really refreshing to hear from someone who has been at the highest level of the craft, a New York Times bestseller, and just how much that they're really trying to change lives of others, not just about himself, but he does this for a purpose and the reason of giving to all of us, sharing these stories, not for his own gain, but so we can learn from the top level athletes, the top level performers in the world and seeing their struggles because everybody goes through struggles. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have or anything like that. There's going to be tough times. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be people that think you have to be one thing or you think you have to fit into society, but you don't. You can be you and you can be fully confident in who you are. That's what this podcast, this episode, the previous episode has been all about. Finding your identity and being helpful. We've all been given God-given gifts and abilities to use. To use for the greater good of others. To pour into others, to be a servant for others, and to ultimately fill ourselves. Big time thank you to Ray Bartholomew for coming on the Game of Life podcast and sharing that with us. Awesome. What I need from you, Game of Lifers, as I said in the podcast before... We can get some more five-star reviews. We can get some big-time guys coming on this podcast. 
like even bigger than we've had. We've had some great, great guests. But it all comes down to you. It all comes down to you leaving that five-star review on iTunes 15 seconds out of your day. I would be psyched. I'll shout you out on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Whatever you want, I got you. Five-star review. Okay, have a great week, and anything you need, you know I'm here with you, I know I'm here for you on this journey, this awesome journey of life, because life is a journey, enjoy it.